begins when a group of firefighters start working a new tour of duty. Safety is the most important thing to talk about because they have to be prepared if there's an alarm. That's why some of the firefighters start checking the engine and the equipment right away, even during the meeting. Then everyone goes to work to make sure all the trucks are ready. The first thing we do after roll call every morning is check all our tools and equipment. This is my hook for today and my compartment. I make sure that the hook is clean, free of splinters and cracks. We use this to pull ceilings to find fire. We also use it as a tool to guide ourselves in the dark, smoky area. So this is in good shape. Now I check my compartment. The first thing I check is the tote weld. We use this to cut heavy gauge steel. We also use it for car extrications, uh, guard rails and the like. This is oxygen, and this is something called nap gas, which helps us cut. Us cut. <laughs> you can tell by the color of the cones and the flame that it's in good working order. And I can show it down. And I also have to check our first aid bag. We use this for heart attacks, car accidents, people that go in the river. You can see we have a lot of stuff, bandages, dressings, neck braces. Everything seems to be well stocked. Are they ready to go out yet? <laughs> no, not yet, Tommy. First, the firefighters have to make sure their tools and equipment are working perfectly. Well, let's talk with Firefighter Thor over there. He'll tell us about the uniforms the firefighters wear to help protect themselves, and about some of the important tools they need to do their jobs. We're going to talk about some of the personal equipment that the firemen use. Um, first of all, we all wear special clothes in the firehouse that help to protect us from, uh, from heat and fire. And we also wear these harnesses that we use uh, when we use ropes. In case we had to save ourselves from a fire or save somebody else from a fire, we can attach these harnesses to a rope and lower ourselves or lower someone else to safety. Uh, when an alarm comes in, um, I would first put on my radio. I would just put it around my neck like this and make sure it's turned on. And this allows me to communicate with the other firefighters that are working at the fire. Then I would put on my boots, and I have a pair of brand new boots to put on today. And we just slip our, our shoes off that we wear at the firehouse, and we slip on the fire boots. And these boots are specially designed for firefighters. They have steel in the toe and underneath to help protect us from uh, walking on any nails or broken glass or anything like that. And they also pull up like this. High up on our legs. And this protects us from hot water and broken glass and nails and that sort of thing when we're crawling around inside of a fire. Then I would put on my coat. It's a very big, heavy coat, made of very special material to help keep firefighters fire safe. Fighter safe. And it snaps up like this. And it has these big yellow Those stripes on, on it. and this helps, uh, uh, these are reflective. And it helps to allow us to see each other in a fire, and if ever we should get hurt or trapped, it would help uh, other firefighters to find us. Then I would put my flashlight on, because it's very dark. Even in the daytime with all the smoke, it's very dark in the fires. I'll make sure it works. Then I have my fire gloves. These are also special for, for firefighting. They help protect us from, from steam and water burns as well as from uh, touching anything that was hot or sharp. And then I would put on my helmet. And the helmet also has yellow stickers on it that, that reflect to help see each other. And it has a number, the number of our company. Number seven. And that allows us to identify each other at fires. It also has eye shields that come down in front to help us uh, help protect our eyes. And it has a liner inside that comes down. These flaps come down to help protect our ears so our ears don't get burned. So we're pretty well protected. 
Then after we got to the fire, I would put my air mask on because there's a lot of very dangerous gases in fires. The gas and the smoke is very dangerous. It goes on like this. It has a felt to go around my waist. And this is very heavy to carry, but it's the only thing that helps us breathe in a fire. And when we got close to the fire, I would turn it on, and it would make, it's going to make a noise. And that lets me know that it's working. And that noise also lets me know if it starts to run out of air. If it starts to run out of air, it makes that noise, and it tells me to get out. When we put it on, it has this net that goes over my head to help keep it in place. <laughs> now, I'd be kneeling down on the floor because it'd be very hot and it'd be cooler down, down here. here. And I would put it on. on. And then put my helmet back on. <coughs> and that's what it would sound like inside a fire. I don't know if you can hear me now, but that's what it sounds like. And some people might think that's pretty scary, but that's what we have to do when we come into a fire. So if you ever hear or see anybody like that, don't be afraid of them. They're a firefighter. That's what they look like. Whoa, where did everything go? I can't see. <laughs> These helmets are made for the firefighters, Tommy. Maybe when you get older, you'll decide to be one. When is everything happening? Are the trucks going out yet? Fire engines are always ready to go out, Billy, at a moment's notice. But there's still a lot more preparation involved. Every day, firefighters first have to make sure all their tools and equipment are inspected. Some of that equipment's kept on ladder trucks. Take a look. Hi, this part of the fire truck has a number of tools that saves a lot, a lot of lives. Up here we have what looks like a sled, but it's really called a Stokes. It's like a sled, but we might use this, actually, if you hurt in a fire, fire. to bring you out of a building. That's only in a very rare case. Now, now in here, this is where we have a lot of other fun stuff. This is called the Jaws of Life. This is the generator. This is what we actually use to start up the Jaws of Life. Now, this is a cutter, and as you'll see, this opens and closes so we can cut up, a, cut open a car like it was a tin can. And this, this we use to spread open, open the car. car, also in order to get you out if you're in there, if you're in danger. Look, boys, the firefighters are checking their saws to make sure they're working properly. Sometimes in a fire, doors are locked and the firefighters have to cut through hard metal to get inside. The saw can help them get to people in trouble quickly and save lives. The firefighters have to start their saws every day. Now the firefighters are testing their ladders. See how quick they are? The ladder can help them climb up to a window to help someone. This portable ladder is called an extension ladder. Watch how the men run to set it up. The ladder is made of fire-resistant metal. It has a pulley that raises a second inside section. And once they lock that in place, presto, up they go. It takes very little space on the truck, but when it's extended, this tool becomes a long, sturdy ladder. Do they hook up the hoses to a fire hydrant? No, we get the water from a fire hydrant, but then we put it in a special truck called an engine or a pumper. Let's talk with Don, the engine driver, about how the pumper works. We call him the chauffeur. This is a, a, an engine pumper. This, what it does, it puts water on the fire, basically. Uh, that's the job of this apparatus. When we pull up to a, a fire or any kind, we'd hook up to a fire hydrant and get water into the inside the pumps through this here, fitting right here, four and a half inch uh, inlet. We then hook up our hoses to the outlets. These here gates, we pull them to let the water come out, to go through the hoses to the fire. Dials tell me how much water I'm getting from the pressure from the hydrant, how much pressure I'm putting out in each individual hose line that which I open up, we have lines connected to. Well, we have, on this here stretch would be an inch and three quarter hose with two and a half inch also on it if we get that far into it. This would be basically used for a, a small fire, one room, two room fire. That would be one of those first line stretch. If it's a heavy volume of fire, they won't use that line. They only use that on a smaller fire. Otherwise, you use a two and a half inch line, which you would, you would get more water out of. 
which is the main thing. The more fire, the more water you want to put out onto it. And you would hook it up to each either gate. You'd have the right fitting on to it. This is hooked up for the inch three quarter. We'll go on to this one down here. You see the smaller fitting there. So that would be for the smaller hose. This one's hooked up for a Siamese stretch to a, a large high rise building. We would supply the Siamese outside in front of the building. You would see we would use a larger hose because you want more water going into that hose. So you use a three and a half inch hose for that. And that would go on to that. The back of the rig is our hose bed. We have inch three quarter, three and a half inch, and two and a half inch hose. The inch three quarter, you would take your folds, pull it out, and go to the back of the rig and step back and wait for the other members of the uh, team to pull off their lens that they may need for the fire. Then they would proceed to the fire building. Then the chauffeur and myself would break the line and hook it up to the side of the pumper and proceed to give them water as much as they needed, hopefully. This here is what they call a roller. These, the, the members bring inside to the build, a high-rise building, which I would hook up to the Siamese with the three and a half inch hose. This is used in, on the interior of that building because they can't bring this hose up 40 or 50 stories. So inside a high-rise building, there's outlets on each floor for them to hook up this hose. They'll bring in approximately three lengths to hook up on each individual floor, whatever they may need at that floor. The chauffeur also drives the truck. He's going to show us how to work all the controls. My job is to drive this to a scene of a fire and put water on the fire with this apparatus. Yeah. Now, in getting there, I would have to first naturally start up the uh, vehicle and proceed. We turn on all the lights, the emergency lights. They would all be going up on top and prepared to leave quarters. All the members would get on, we'd leave quarters with all the lights My responding. In here, we also have a uh, public address system to let people know that we're coming or to get, get out of the way. We have an air horn, which makes a lot of noise. You probably heard the streets when you've seen fire engines go by. We have sirens that make many different types of noises. Many lights that will flash on and off, so we are very colorful to come in our block. Now, there is an officer normally sits on my right hand side. He will be in control of the whole operation going to the fire. He takes charge of the lights, the air horn, all that stuff. Because my main concern is driving there and getting there safely as quickly as possible. You know, sometimes firefighters can spend hours just waiting around the firehouse. They're always ready to go, but they never quite know just exactly when somebody's going to call for help. It can be nice and quiet, and then suddenly... Oh, well, there's an emergency now. Somebody's called for help, and the firefighters are going to go Let's go.
fighters have to respond. The faster they get there, the more chance that nothing gets out of control. Sometimes firefighters have to go into tall buildings to try and find the smoke before it turns into a big fire. Other times it's just a false alarm or a very small fire. But every time there's a call or an alarm, they still have to leave the firehouse, just in case it's an emergency. 